Well, that leads me on to my next question, which uh, I've also um, watched Dr. Bruce Bugby of Utah State University, and he has stated, which he, he goes more into the, the chemistry side, but he has stated that whether through an organic or synthetic means, plants take up nutrients following the same process or path. But based on what we know about synthetic nutrient production versus organic nutrient production through biology and their process, what is the difference in the carbon footprint from both? The, when we're dealing with those inorganic um, materials where there are no microorganisms to pull those nutrients back into a body that will not leach, the biggest problem with the chemical end of things is you're killing all of those organisms. Every single inorganic fertilizer um, synthetic fertilizer is a salt and it's going to take water up in order to have an adequate amount of liquid around those chemicals mm -hmm. well that means water has been taken away from the microorganisms so you usually see the information of mother nature trying to convey to you that there's something very wrong in the soil because all your microorganisms are dying. If you don't pay attention to those important signals and go, oh no, my bacteria have dropped from 500 micrograms per gram of soil down to 100 micrograms per gram of soil, what's going on, What something's wrong and figure it out, then you're going to lose your plant. Hmm. The plant needs that water too. So if you're putting down something that is a salt sodium chloride everyone thinks of that table salt but potassium hydroxide that's a salt um, when we're looking at calcium carbonate that's a salt when we look at well most any of the um, inorganic forms of nutrients are actually salts and you're destroying the water balance and you're killing all the organisms that you have to have to do all of these beneficial things. You can't Just like form... we can't drink salt water. Right. Yeah. It's a very it's a good analogy to say to make that kind of point. You know, here you are out on the ocean surrounded by massive amounts of water, but you don't dare drink it because it upsets that salt balance within your body and that salt will eventually kill you. No different in soil. Right. So we've got to stop using those inorganic fertilizers. We need to understand what we're doing. And just the, the, the process of what biology does versus what we do as humans in order to extract uh, nitrogen, for example, using these large industrial machines that pull it out of the air and the amount of natural gas that it takes to heat and then convert it into nitrogen versus the nitrogen that we're producing by having biology just do this normal process with no leaching inside the soil uh, it's it's got to be a vast difference in the amount of carbon output versus carbon negative that I would imagine that the biology is doing on its own. When we look at um, the differences between fungi and bacteria, bacteria have been promoted by the constant tillage in, agri in chemical agricultural systems. That means all of the fungi basically have been shredded to death, you know, sliced and diced and ripped and pulled apart, so we're missing a major component of the food web. And it's really the fungi that have that ability to sequester the carbon in a soil organic matter form instead of as something soluble which washes away or something that's released as a gas. Carbon dioxide is, reached, is uh, released as a gas. Bacteria are not efficient at keeping carbon within the soil and if you look at that um, how much carbon is being released. Bacteria, for example, most of their s foods are very narrow um, C to N ratios. Bacteria like um, high carbon materials, uh, but they've got to sequester, they've got to pull out the nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, all of those things from that carbon lattice work that occurs when you're talking about any car carbon-based molecule. And so the bacteria are pulling those n nutrients out, but it's taking that carbon that was once in the form of a sugar, and it's releasing it as CO2. Well, that's an extremely inefficient use of that carbon. Fungi 
start working on the much more complex sugars, the complex amino acid, the very complex humix and fulvix. And when they do that, they're pulling most of that carbon into their body and they're not releasing it as CO2. Hmm. When people have been using release of CO2 as an indicator of what kinds of mi microorganisms are present in their soil, they've missed this point. That bacteria, if they're eating on something that has 30 carbons for every one nitrogen, the bacteria is, wants that nitrogen. So it's going to rip the nitrogen out of there and release those 30 molecules of carbon as carbon dioxide. So in the life cycle of one, one bacterium, think of the massive amount of CO2 that's being released because of that. When fungi utilize those uh, more complex sugars, they're gonna, the fungus still needs those nutrients, but it takes that carbon and puts it as surface layers on the inside of the older hyphae. Mm -hmm. Because the nema uh, they need to be protected from the uh, attempts of nematodes trying to eat their hypha mm -hmm. further on. The older and older it gets, that hyphae trail that they leave requires more carbon to be put on the inside of that hypha, of that strand, so that when something attacks that strand and tries to eat it, they can't pull it apart because of the inner steel core. Wow that's present in that fungus. That's an increase in dexterity? Um, it's, it, it's like when you put up a, a, a metal um, insert behind your drywall, for example, mm. because you want this to be the room that you store all of your treasures in, something wow. along that like line. Like a safe. <laughs> yeah, like a safe. And that's what that fungus is trying to do is, wow. if something comes up with their, you know, their, um, their spear, and tries to puncture that cell wall, it, it can't get in for love nor money because the fungus has completely covered the inside of that hypha with this strong layer of almost pure carbon. It's almost the so same way a tree CO2. grows bark to protect itself. Mm -hmm. That's right, yep, wow. that's a good analogy. Wow. Be sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any new Soul Food Web or homesteading content.